Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at binomial distributions on a TI Inspire. That guy over there. And we're going to go ahead and break down how you go about plugging in a binomial distribution into a calculator like this. I'm going to show you three major ways to do it. So stick with me and let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni if you haven't met me before and we're going to go ahead and break down how to use this TI Inspire for binomial distribution. Now just to let you know starting off there are three ways to access the binomial functions on here and there are two different binomial functions to use binomial PDF and CDF. We're going to discuss the difference between the two of them and look at all three different ways to access them. We're gonna look at them two ways first and then go back and look at the third way after. Since the third way involves us using some type of coding to put it in there, so we don't really know what that coding is until we use it through the menu first. So let's go ahead, everyone can join me in clicking on the calculator portion of the TI Inspire. Now, if you're not on this home screen and you get there first, just go ahead and click the home button in the top right hand corner of the calculator and that will bring you to the screen. You really could use the scratch pad calculator or this one down here, but I like to always stick with using the actual calculator document, which is this one. So I'm gonna click on this button and open up a fresh document. Now from here, I need to find the binomial function and it's going to be located in the menu. And a lot of times I tell my students not to memorize the buttons to go to it. Just know that you should be able to find it in the menu. Sometimes it's better to remember at the end of the year how to get to everything in your calculator if you just remember general processes to find it. So instead of saying like, oh, go to menu 667, no, don't do that. Go ahead and go to menu and read what your options are. In this case, there are two different ways to get to the binomial distribution. You can either go to number five or number six, probability or statistics. Now, if you go to the probability section, then down here, number five called distributions will open up all the different probability distributions that we know. And down here at the bottom, you can see binomial PDF and directly below that one, you could see the binomial CDF. Now, if we go into the same menu again, but this time go into statistics, you'll see that under number five is distributions as well. So now in the statistic distribution, it's actually the same list as the probability distributions. And again, you can see down here that binomial PDF is at the bottom, and we can scroll down a bit further to see the binomial CDF. So let's go ahead and discuss the difference between PDF and CDF. Binomial distributions is when you're looking at the probability of a certain number of successes given a certain amount of trials. If the probability you are looking for is for an exact one number, one number of successes, so let's say I want to find the probability of five successes out of 10 or seven successes out of 10. If I'm looking for one number, you use PDF. If you're looking for a range of numbers, you use that CDF function. So that means like if I'm looking for the binomial probability that we have five or more successes out of the 10, or if I say I wanna know what's the probability that we have from two to seven successes out of 20 attempts, those would be a range of probabilities and that's when you use CDF. So before I go ahead and jump into our first example, but we're going to start off by clicking on this binomial PDF because the first one we're going to look at is going to be looking for exactly one number in the probability. Let's go ahead and look at this first question. It says there's a 20% chance my one minute ACT prep video will get picked up by YouTube shorts. Shameless plug, if you didn't know, every Tuesday and Thursday, I release an ACT prep video with a practice problem and the solution in 60 seconds or less. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can see those and raise your ACT score to the best of your ability. But back to the question, if I release eight of those in a month, what is the probability that two of them will get picked up? So this is what we're talking about by binomial PDF because they're asking for the probability of exactly two successes out of the eight trials. So let's go ahead and jump over to the calculator and see what it's actually asking us for. It says we need N, the number of trials. In this case, we said that there were eight videos, eight videos. 
Then we have P, the probability of success. This is an important thing to know. You always have to put your probability of success in as a decimal. So don't put in 20 for 20%. You want to put that in as 0. 0.20. So once you've got that in, the last thing is what is the X value that they supplied us with? In this case, we want to know the probability of two successes. So I'm putting in the number two. Now, if you left this blank, it would give you all of the probabilities from zero successes all the way up to eight. So it would give you this huge, long like list of numbers, and that's actually probability of each one from zero up to eight attempts. And if you change your N, it'll go all the way up to whatever your N is. So I'm going to go ahead though. This is the question we got. I'm going to hit OK. And that's it, guys. That's the answer right there. 0 0.293601. So there is about a 29% chance that two, exactly two of my eight videos will get picked up by YouTube. So that's a binomial PDF. Let's go ahead and take a look at binomial CDF. So up above, the question has changed from saying exactly two to saying what's the probability that less than three of the eight will get picked up. So this is now a range of numbers, anywhere that is less than three. So what are the number of successes you could have here that would be less than three? Anywhere from zero to two. Those would be the numbers less than three, and those are the amount of successes. We can't go lower than zero here because you can't have negative successes. So how do I go about answering a question like this? Well, when, instead of going to PDF, we're going to go into our menu and look at CDF. So remember, you can go to probability or statistics, go to distributions, and you want to like hover over this little arrow and it'll let you scroll down to some additional ones. So I see binomial CDF right here, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and click on. Again, it asks for our number of trials, which we know is eight. It asks for our probability of success, which we said as a decimal is 0.12. And then it wants to know a lower bound and an upper bound. This is the range I was talking about. So I already said that in this situation, less than three would imply that we're going from zero to two. Three itself is not less than three. So we do not include the three. So I'm going to go ahead. It already had zero in for the lower bound. So I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to make the upper bound two. So we're now going to find the probability from zero to two successes out of the eight. And click OK. And again, you can see it has given us the answer of 0.796918. So in other words, there's about a 79 to 80% chance that less than three of my videos out of the eight will get picked up by the YouTube shorts. So for the last example, we're going to do another CDF, but in this case, we're saying more than one. You can see the question has changed above. And in this case, I'm not going to use the menu. I'm just going to type it in directly. Now that we've done it through the menu before, we know what it is asking for. So as you can see, I got a blinking cursor right now, and I'm actually just going to type in the same thing I see above. So instead of going through the menu, I could just type in binom, uh, and we want CDF. And you'll notice that it went from being italicized to just being straight normal font. The moment it goes normal, it means it recognizes that you have defined a function in this calculator. So I'm going to open my parentheses and just mimic the same stuff we had above. So I know that the first number it wants is that eight, the number of trials. I know that the second one it wants is that 0.2 for the probability of success. And then it's going to want a lower bound and an upper bound. Now that's where this question is actually different from the last one because before we went from zero to two. This one says that we want more than one, more than one. So the first number that is more than one, I'm going to put another comma here. First number that's more than one is two, then comma. And my upper bound would go up to the total amount of successes I could have here. So I could have up to eight successes out of my eight trials. So I'm going to go ahead and make my upper bound eight because that's the highest I can go up to. Then we go ahead and close our parentheses and hit enter, and you can see it gives me the answer because it knows what we were trying to do. So this is one way you can do it without using the menu, but it does involve you to A, know what the coding is, binomial CDF, or PDF in that case, and it involves you knowing which variables they want in what order in the parentheses. 
So that can be a little challenging to remember all the way through. But if you're using this program a lot, you might be able to do it pretty quickly. You can see here the final answer turned out being 0.496684, which means there's about a 49 to 50% chance that more than one of the eight videos are going to be picked up by YouTube Shorts. Wait, don't go. If this helped you out at all, go ahead and hit the like button below to help me out. So this has been covering how to do a binomial distribution on your TI Inspire. We walked through how to do it for both PDF and CDF questions and looked at three different ways you could actually input that into the calculator. I hope you found this material helpful. Remember, if you want to keep getting videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Remember, my name is Daniel Crony and this is Probability and Statistics.